the move, and on the go, we're on the road again. This week, hot dogs, fins, and chrome in Terrace, B.C. We just wanted something that was a little bit different, you know, why be normal kind of thing. Gardening in darkness and silence, a Fredericton woman's remarkable feat. It's lovely. Of course, she can smell it and she can feel it. And a Guelph artist imagines Michelangelo with skates. I could paint this ceiling using hockey players. <laughs> we're on the move and on the go, we're on the road again. Travel to any community in Canada and you're bound to find some kind of hockey arena. There's no doubt hockey is Canada's sport. But here in Guelph, Ontario, one man has taken his love of hockey and elevated it to high art. In anything you have to express what's inside you can get it out. Doing the painting has allowed me to become part of this, this National Hockey League, this, this dream that I once had as a child. Instead of just dumping it past all the devils, and then a hard shot by Sakura right over the catching glove of Joseph ties the game. When John Manick was a young boy, all he ever wanted was to play in the NHL. It's on your mind. You think it all day long. It recess, you're playing hockey after school, um, it, weekends. It's, it's constantly on your mind. John's love of hockey didn't stop at the rink or in the schoolyard. He was something of an artistic prodigy, and what he liked to draw best was, naturally, hockey players. It starts to become a, an infatuation almost that you want to become these players. So you transfer that onto the page, and it gives you a sense of power. One of his early paintings was of his hero, Philadelphia Flyer captain Bobby Clark. It was accepted in a juried art exhibit in Regina when John was only 14 years old. So I remember getting this invitation thinking, oh, this is fabulous, I'm famous now. My painting's gonna be in the Mackenzie Gallery in Regina. So I got on my one-speed bike the day of the opening. I remember I got my, my brown polyester suit on with the good high heels, <laughs> I remember. And I get to the door and uh, I was so proud to hand the man at the door my admission to the gallery opening. And he said, well, get out of here, kid. What are you doing here? He didn't I said, even yeah, recognize no. you as the artist? Well, of course not. And accept I, you? No, no, no. What? And, he, and I said, I said, well, my painting's in the show here. And he said, no, I don't think so. This is just for the adults, little boy. I don't know where you got this, but just, you know, go home. They and turned you away? They turned me away. I was very upset. And I remember at the bottom of the stairs, you know, it was kind of like a scene from Gone with the Wind, you know, this will never <laughs> happen again, you know. You know, with God as my witness, I will yeah. never let this happen again. So starting with that day, every piece of artwork that I do, I thumbprint. Well, John grew up to be a professional artist and a teacher. Ten years ago, while he was teaching at the Canadian base in Lahr, Germany, he took his art class on a trip to Rome, to the Sistine Chapel. It was a visit that would change everything. Uh, and I remember walking through uh, to go into the Vatican. You take the deep breath, because this is Michelangelo. He's my hero. I love Michelangelo. And I walk in, and it just, just opens up in front of you. It's just amazing. The colors just start to, to come out in front of your eyes. And your jaw just drops. And you look at it, and you go, oh my, this is amazing. And we weren't in there five minutes. When, when I said to my wife, you know, they look like hockey uniforms. They're so bright. They do, and they got the different colors. They got the green coming here with a yellow sash across I here. I believe you. And Nobody I said, else in the I, world I would do that to Michelangelo. <laughs> I know, relate it right back to the hockey, <laughs> which is very sacrilegious, I think, but, but it was, it's still, it's, 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 it's still, it came through. And I remember standing underneath there and looking up at the ceiling saying, I could paint this ceiling using hockey players. I felt it. I could just tell. I just knew it had to be done, and I could do it. I mean, what a great person to base your work upon. Yeah, so you take one of the masters. I mean, he had a structure there that's beautiful. It's, it's poetic, the way it's laid out. It was a way to put in like 160 different people in one painting and make it look harmonious. 
John's painting illustrates the history of hockey from its very beginnings to the present day. And we go back to 1880 when we had the, the ice hockey on the prairies with the sticks carved out of the, the tree limbs. And it was played as entertainment. It was fun. And then it gets a little bit more serious. We get into you know, the history of hockey up till now where we have the Canada-Russia series and the, the U.S. Olympic dream team. Don Cherry's in there. Yeah. Well, Don Cherry belongs there. He's really promoted hockey. In a, in a redneck kind of way for a lot of people. They, they don't agree with his opinions, but they listen to him. He's in there with and Foster it, Hewitt. And, and Danny Gallivan. And Gallivan. Yeah. From 1967 to, to modern times, I picked who I thought were the 12 best players. Gordie Howe, of course, Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, uh, all the big names. But it ends up at the end of the painting as playing for fun again. And I took a picture of me when I was about grade six or so playing ball hockey and uh, just having fun. You, I, that's what it has to be. There it has you to be are fun. amongst all those hockey greats. Yeah. You have finally made it to I the NHL. <laughs> I love it. It's my painting. That's right. I, can put, I put my name on the Stanley Cup, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is it on there? Yeah, it's on there. What do you no, want to Where are you going to put it? I haven't approached anybody yet, but to me, the perfect spot would be Pearson International, where I thought for people to come into Canada, come up the escalator, and it would just open up in front of them. And the plan gets even bigger. I think we do a double system on twice as big the history of the Olympic Games for winter and summer Olympics, and you run it 300 feet, the length of a football field, by uh, 50 feet tall. And you just run it, and it would just be a, just a grand scope. And you can be sure that somewhere in some corner of that painting, there will be a small but not insignificant mark, the thumbprint of John Manick.